Hello visual effects people, I'm AK, this is Fluid Ninja Live, and today we are going to talk about render buffers and how to use them. As a starter example, I would like to check the material that this red blob thing is using and trace back the sources. So I'm quitting the gameplay, selecting Ninja Live Actor, going to the details panel, and in the Ninja Live component, in live generic, we could find this list of materials. It's a predefined list with 12 elements and you could add your own slots and define your own materials. And below the list there is an index telling us that it is number 11 that we are using right now. So I'm just jumping there with the magnifier glass. It's a material instance, it's a very practical way to uh, differentiate and create mutations, variations of the same material, to have a single base material and use instances to modify the parameters. But right now I'm curious how the base material looks like, so I'm jumping there with the magnifier glass. And here we go. Please notice that the file is located in Fluid Ninja Live per output materials per base materials. We have a few base materials here and here is our candidate. Um, looking at this graph, we have four inputs on the left, named divergence buffer, pain buffer, pressure and velocity buffer. And by selecting another typical output material, Ninja Output Basic, you could identify a density buffer as well. So we have like five or six buffers. Now, um, if you go to the project route and locate this help blueprint, you could find the flowchart describing how the Fluid Ninja Render pipeline works. The main point is that the red uh, boxes are materials processing the incoming information and the blue boxes are like outputs written to render targets. Uh, that's what I call uh, render buffers. And you could access any of these render buffers so have a look at this. Now, uh, what if I would like to visualize some of these render targets and render buffers? I go to the project route and I locate the preset manager and I drag it on level. And I'm changing the selection highlight. And that's it. I'm going full screen, starting the game. And here we go, the preset manager on the left. Um, since this is the only object on the level right now, this only Fluid Ninja Live object that is active, the preset manager has automatically picked it. You could see this red row on the top. We have a few more guys inactive, so the preset manager didn't care. Now, if I scroll down to the bottom, here is this uh, output material preview thing. And so what if I pick the first one? Well. It is the density buffer, and this is a density buffer combined with uh, translucent alpha. This is velocity. Uh, this is pressure. And this one gives us a hint what is happening with this big red blobby sphere. As you could see, uh, pressure and divergence is very good for refraction and shock waves and stuff like that. So what I did is, using the pressure uh, to perform a geometric distortion, if you have a look at this big red blob, it is clearly visible that it's the pressure buffer that has been used. And as you could see, I'm going a bit further, uh, when I'm making this object uh, wobble, the shadow wobbles as well, so it's really changing uh, the shape of the geometry, because word position offset is handled. Now let's have a look at this material and how it looks like from the inside. Uh, you might have noticed that refraction, um, sorry, reflections are also distorted. So uh, looking at the material, um, we could see that the information coming from the pressure buffer 
is channeled to the vert position offset well to the vert displacement kind of similar and we are generating a normal map based on vertex vertex normals and we are adding the pressure buffer to this vertex normal and this gives us a proper wobbly distorted tangent <laughs> normal space that could be used to distort uh, reflections as you could see roughness is zero which means that the material is completely reflecting so in this material it's really just the pressure buffer that I have been using now going back to the scene and selecting a different material again going down in the preset manager here orange haze let's see how this guy looks like uh -huh. uh, seems like we have some kind of refraction here you see uh, the edge of that black uh, that gray wall in the background is distorted and it is because uh, we are using refraction combined with color so um, what we are doing right now is using the density buffer to calculate this refraction and also using it for uh, tone mapping to create these colors um, the thing is called orange haze so again I'm just looking it up by selecting this actor and the ninja life component and here we go in the list so it is not the default material but it is added to this array so in case if I would like to switch to this material dynamically by using the interface or sequencer or blueprint I could do that and it is here for experimenting so I'm locating the material instance and as you could see uh, the refraction option is switched on and if I locate uh, the belonging base material as ninja output basic well that is the material that is used in most cases and as you could see it is utilizing uh, only the density buffer and it's creating all kind of tone mapping and refraction and opacity tricks with this single buffer of course uh, you would be able to to copy paste any of these buffers from uh, from this buffer previsualization material so it's really up to you to construct your own materials and material instances add these instances to the component list and define them as default material and so you could you could create your own effect and visuals um, there is one more thing I would like to show and it is located on a different level so let me please jump there and it's a modification of the <laughs> classic fluid blast that you might have seen as a big planar smoke thing and it's a big spherical smoke thing and important is that once I shoot a projectile the projectile is leaving a mark and that mark is lingering there for a while leaving the blue trace and I would like to quickly show you how it is done uh, firstly let, um, let me quickly get inside the sphere just to have a look around how it looks like from the inside and exiting the bowl and having a look at the material so again I'm getting to the details panel oh it's me Delta and locating the material instance that we have been using and tracing back to the base material uh -huh. ninja output advanced well the difference between the basic and the advanced material is that advanced contains ray marching and parallax occlusion mapping but uh, generic graph the generic uh, network of shaders is the same now I would like to point you to this input called paint buffer 
So the reason why this uh, projectile is leaving a blue mark because we are using the pain buffer for tone mapping using the projectile mark in the pain buffer uh, for highlights and any other color for these low-key red colors. Uh, looking at the base um, for the material instance you could see that we have two colors for the tone mapping and the bluish hue is for the highlights where the projectile hits the object surface and this orange red thing is for the lower end of this grayscale thing so again having another look this is how it works in practice tone mapping using the paint buffer and some ray marching so that's how we are using uh, output materials and render buffers and later on we're gonna cover this topic in details thank you for your patience and see you next time